we're really going to get robots to basically take on the next generation of tasks, we have to be much more uh, adaptive. And a big part of that is, is controlling force. So there are a lot of tasks that humans do that don't require a lot of precision, but you might feel how something goes together. And we're building the ability to control that force into all the joints of our robot, while at the same time also allowing to control uh, position and velocity. A core component of being able to do really solid control is to be able to do everything in a real-time environment. So the control of your motor has to be very precise in terms of timing. The, the feedback and the way you process your sensors also has to be very precise. That real-time control is actually distributed into each individual module of the robot so that your developed environment can be just as powerful but way more flexible. Our modules are designed from the ground up as series elastic actuators. You have a spring that is actually inserted in between uh, the gears and the output. This gives a mechanical compliance, kind of like a shock absorber, but we are also able to sense the deflection of that spring and infer torque. So this gives us two very important aspects. So one is torque control, being able to actually uh, command the robot to apply a force. The other is to be able to sense force, to be able to actually sense and react to it. This enables for a new generation of robots to be built. So robots that aren't just stiff and rigid and don't just go to the exact position you're commanding it, but can actually react fluidly to the world and the environment around them. Heavy is taking a unique approach to modular robotics because we're thinking of modular robotics not just as the actuator, but as the platform. That you can build not just a robot arm out of, but a legged robot or a wheeled robot that balances these. Uh, links all have indexed holes that you can easily just plug in, swap, change, and they click together at certain set intervals. And so to change the length or the rotation of one of the links or change the type of brackets is really just changing one line of code in your kinematic description. All the tools that we use above that level adapt to that configuration you've defined in one spot in your code. And so you don't have to change your inverse kinematics code or your kinematics code. You, you get all that for free using the APIs you can add extra components very easily. Because we have through bores and the wiring all goes through the center bore of these components, if you wanted to add, for example, a camera on the end of the robot, you can just add the camera, throw out the USB or Ethernet cable for that camera through the system. With the Ethernet, you can just plug it into the last module, and you don't need any additional wiring support around the outside of the system. Modularity allows you to take one system and turn it into something completely new. You're not just buying one robot, you're buying a ton of robots that you can create with those same parts. People often ask us why our, our module looks like this. It kind of looks like a funky tape dispenser. It's all about function. Uh, there's a hole in the middle for passing wiring through, and it's also designed to fit the actual connectors through that are used to interconnect the modules without having to do any kind of retermination. The connectors come off at an angle, so if they're sticking out straight, um, there'd be a high likelihood that they get snagged as soon as you turned on your robot and they'd get ripped out or damaged. The angle protects that. We put a very strong bearing into the output so that when you bolt your robot arm together, you don't have to add any external supports, any external bearings. The module is strong enough to be able to handle that load. Another important aspect of series elasticity is just the pure shock absorption. The spring, in a sense, will protect the actuator from damage. On the flip side, it can also protect the world from damage. So if your robot, again, if it bangs into something, there's a, a much lower likelihood that it's going to, to damage something. The problem we're trying to solve at Heavy is that robots are hard to build, even if you're an engineer or you're a researcher or a robotics expert. We've designed a system that allows researchers to focus on their research, come up with your idea, bolt the robot together, and start, start working with it. Even if it flails around a little bit, it's not going to break. Instead of relying on simulation and going back and doing a bunch of math to prove out that your robot's going to work correctly the first time you flip the switch, we're saying, go ahead, flip the switch. Mm -hmm.